around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Mr. Dillon, ain't this a fine morning, though? A little nippy, maybe, but just fine. Yeah. Indian summer hanging on, winter holding off. You know, Chester, this time of year, I wouldn't trade western Kansas for everything east of the Mississippi. Oh, good morning, Caleb. I've been waiting in this jail office for a full two hours. What time do you start work, Marshal? Uh, Chester, you know Caleb Andrews, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, sir. How are you, Mr. Andrews? <clears throat> Marshal... I have an order here from the U.S. District Court. No? I believe it's your job to serve such orders. It is. I don't get them often, though. Now, order of foreclosure and eviction. On Ed Blake. Uh, Caleb, why are you doing this, Ed? The man borrowed money from me and gave me a mortgage on his farm and household effects. He can't pay it. It only came due three days ago. You sure didn't waste any time. Well, I'm not interested in your opinions, Marshal Dillon. Out of the mortgage, $420. What do you need with $420? You own half of Ford County right now. Marshal, it's not your place. You know as well as I do why Ed Blake can't pay this off. His horse rolled on him last spring and broke his leg. And then his wife and kid nearly broke their backs trying to get a crop out. Oh, I didn't come here to listen now, to if a... you'd let this ride on through the winter, you'd get your money out of it. But if you go ahead and foreclose now, you're going to wipe him out. Marshal, I already have foreclosed. Now, yeah. you'd break a man for $420 that you don't even need, huh? As I said, your opinions don't interest me. All I expect from you is to serve those papers. All right, I'll serve them. You'll notice they're to be served today. I said I'd serve them. Now, get out. What, sir? This office belongs to the United States government, and as far as I know, that's one thing you've got no mortgage on, so get out. You may find I have some influence in Washington, Marshal Dillon. Then see if you can get me a decent salary for this rotten job I've got. <clears throat> sure was a fine morning, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it sure was. All right, Chester, let's settle up. Job I sure wish we didn't have to do, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. He sure is a nice farm. Ed and Martha have put in a lot of work here the last four years. Chester, we don't have any choice. Yes, sir, I know. It's a downright shame. Hey, Marshal! Oh, boy. Well, hello, Jimmy. Look here what I got, Marshal. Looks to me like a mighty dead coyote. He's been killing my chickens so last night I hid out behind the barn. I got him with one shot, Marshal, and there wasn't even a full moon. Oh, that's fine, Jimmy. Matt Dillon, how are you? Morning, Martha. And Chester, too. Miss Blake? Glad to see you. Get down and come on in. Oh, thank you. Jimmy, now that you've showed that thing to Marshal Dillon, take it away somewhere. <laughs> All right, Mom. <laughs> he's real proud of those chickens of his, and he's done fine with them. Oh, here I am, though, keeping you standing out here in the yard. Come on, let's go inside. Well, uh, uh we, we really can't stay, Martha. Oh, nonsense. You don't get out here once in a coon's age. Yeah, I know, but, uh... And you're just in time. 
your favorite dish, Matt. I was just about to take it out of the oven when what, you rolled cornbread? up. Cornbread? Buttermilk cornbread? Right. <laughs> Ed's not here, but you will stay, won't you? Oh, uh, Ed's away, huh? Yes, he's in town. Matt, you're not yourself. What is it? Well, Martha, I, uh, I suppose I ought to talk to Ed about this, but maybe it'd be better if he hears it from you. He's what? I've got a court order here. It has to do with that mortgage of Caleb Andrews. It's an order of foreclosure and eviction and sale. No. Oh, no. Yeah, here it is. We were so sure he'd extend it. So sure. Oh, Matt, how, how long before we have to get out? Five days. So soon? Oh, you were right, Matt. It is better that Ed hears it from me, coming on top of everything else. Martha, if there's anything I can do, I... You know, you just let me know. Matt, I don't blame you for this. I understand. Come on in now and have some cornbread with us. Well, I, I couldn't. I'm sorry. Thanks anyway, Martha, but I... Uh, I'm just not very hungry. You've looked low all week. Well, it's just things in general, Kitty. You know, sometimes you get to wondering if it's all worth it. It's the Blakes that's bothering you, isn't it, Matt? Chester was telling me. Yeah, Chester talks too much. That's well, not your fault, Matt. Somebody had to serve the orders. Yeah, and somebody has to be a hangman, too. Well, life's never all good, Matt. There's always a little bad in it. On well, my job, it's more than a little, Doc. Try making your living sometime as a dance hall girl. Yeah, I guess so. But you know, when you have to go out and boot somebody like the Blakes off their land and out of their home, then you you just start wondering what is right and what is wrong. Well, if you find out, Matt, that means. Oh, <laughs> here you are, Marshal. I I stopped by the jail. All right, Caleb. What's on your mind? That Blake family, Marshal. They were supposed to vacate today, and they haven't done it. I rode by there a little while ago. But according to the court order, they got until sundown. Now, look, Marshal, I believe I'd prefer to discuss our business elsewhere than in the presence of this... this woman. Just a minute, Caleb. Matt, I'll go. No. Caleb. You're going to apologize to Miss Russell right now. Matt, no. Apologize? I'm not going to apologize to any cheap little scumbit. Matt, you shouldn't have done it. Sam. Yeah? Take him outside and throw some water on him, will you? Sure, sure, Matt. Come on. Charlie, come here. He'll do everything he can to harm you now, Matt. He'll take it out on the Blakes, too. Maybe. Look, I just got an idea. I'll see you later. Matt, uh, the mere fact a man runs a bank it doesn't always mean he has a free hand in everything he does. A uh, bank has stockholders, board of directors. I have to listen to them. Well, I think they'd approve the loan, Mr. Barkin. Uh, another thing, Caleb Andrews is the biggest account I've got. He's out to get that Blake farm. If I crossed him by making this loan you suggest, oh, Matt, he'd break me. I see. <laughs> All right, Mr. Barkin, forget it. Matt. I realize I'm under obligation to you. You saved my life that time the James brothers held me up. Saved the bank, too, in fact. Oh, that but... was part of my job. That's no obligation. I I was just asking you as a friend to uh, help out another friend. Matt, I'd like to do it, but I just can't, don't you see? Yeah, sure. Forget it. I, I've got to think of my wife and the two girls. Of course you have. It's not that I don't want to help. I understand, Mr. Buckin. Forget it. <laughs> Hold it a while. 
That fire feels kind of good, Mr. Dillon. Getting chilly south tonight. Yeah. Yes, sir, when winter sets in, it always makes you feel good to know you got a warm place to hold up. Be mighty rough to... to... Yeah, I was thinking of the same thing, Chester. You... You reckon they vacated this afternoon? I don't know. We'll ride out there in the morning and find out. Yeah, come in. Can we bother you? Ed, come on in. Martha. Thank you. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Hello. Come on up to the stove. Yeah. The fact is, Matt, we, uh... Kind of like to impose on you for tonight. So we don't have any place to go, no money, and... Well, wondered... We could uh, sleep in the jail. Well, Just sure, Ed. Right, uh, sure, Chester, will you get a fire going back there? Uh, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. And Jones. take some blankets out of the storeroom, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Want to come help me, Jimmy? Yeah, you, sure. you're going along with Chester, yeah. son. Uh, Ed, we may as well get your stuff out of the wagon. Oh, well, there ain't any wagon, Matt. We walked into town. What? You walked? Well, with that lake? A uh, wagon, the uh, stock, all the household goods, they're all covered in that mortgage, you see. So we didn't take anything. We just <clears throat> clothes on our backs. Oh, Ed. So help me, I... It's all right, Matt. We know how you feel. After all, we started with nothing before, and we can do it again. Yeah, there's no reason you should have to. We do have to, though, and that's that. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? He's Jimmy. He grabbed a rifle from the rack and took out the back way. I couldn't stop him. Where on earth is he going? I know where he's going, and heaven help him if we don't catch him. house here on the corner. Looks dark. Yeah, he may not be at home. Ain't no sign of the boy around. But it's ten to one. This is where he headed for. Ah, uh, Chester. Hmm? There's somebody back of that tree there at the left. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Reckon it's him? I don't know. Just keep on walking. Jimmy? It's me, Matt Dillon. You better go away now. Well, I can't do that, Jimmy. But you're a friend of mine. And I figure you're waiting here to do something you'd be sorry for. And I can't let you do that. Nothing you can do about it, Marshal. I got a gun here and I'm going to kill him. Now, you go away and leave me alone. Jimmy, I know how you feel. I don't like Caleb either. But killing him is no answer. Stop, Marshal. No, stay where you are. Don't come any closer. I have to, Jimmy. It's my job. So if you're going to go through with this, I guess you're going to have to kill me first. Stay back. Sorry, Jimmy. I don't have a choice. But you do. Marshal? Now give me the rifle. Uh, I couldn't shoot you, Marshal. You know that. Sure. I kept waking up nights and... Hearing Mom crying. Dad had sit up all night without the lamp lit and no fire. And not say anything. Just sitting. Take it easy now. Why is he doing it to us, Mr. Dillon? Jimmy, will you do something for a friend? If you say so. All right, take that rifle back to the jail. Put it in the rack. And you go to bed. You promise? I promise, Mr. Dillon. I'm sorry. I'll do like you say. All right, Jimmy. Good night, son. Botkin wouldn't do anything, Matt. He wouldn't dare. He'd be scared Caleb would take his money out of the bank. Yeah, that's about what he said. Huh? I don't know, Kitty. I've done everything I can think of. Now, the worst of it is everybody in town is just as scared of Caleb as Mr. Botkin is. 
I doubt if they'll even have the nerve to bid against him at the sale. I know. They'll probably get the place at not much more than the amount of the mortgage. Four hundred and twenty dollars. Matt, I've seen more than that change hands across the poker table in one deal. And to think that's all it takes Mr. to get... Oh, yeah, Jack. Jack? I'm not usually one to eavesdrop on people, but I have been listening to you, too. The reason I butted in, Miss Kitty, I heard you talking about these people losing their home. I don't know this fellow Blake. He's never done any business over my blackjack table and probably never will. No, I don't think he's ever been in here. And I don't know if this will make sense. But the thing is, I left home when I was 10 years old and I've been drifting ever since. When I see somebody like this Blake that sticks it out and works and fights and then gets an ordeal. Well, what I'm getting at, here's $50 if that'll help me. Well, this is pretty decent of you, Jack. Thanks. Sure. Matt, I said a while ago that nearly everyone in town was afraid of Caleb. Well, it looks like there's some who aren't. Like Jack and the other dealers and the girls and the bartenders. Matt, I can raise $420 right here in the Long Branch. I think maybe you could, Kitty. I can do as well as Jack, too. Here's 50 from me. Boys, everybody, listen to me for a minute. Now, quiet down. Quiet down. I got something to say. Sure taking his time getting here, Chester. Well, I told him what you said, Mr. Dillon. I ought to bring him to the office on the run, if anything will. Anytime Caleb figures he's about to lose a dollar or two, it's hitting him where it hurts. The Blake's turned in for the night, have he? I guess so. It's quiet back there. Marshal, what's this all about? Shut the door, Caleb. Now, would you mind telling me why I've been called here at this time of night? Sure. Here's $420. Blake's want to pay off that mortgage. Oh, oh, they do, do they? The court costs up to now will probably run about $10. I'll pay that myself. Well, that's mighty generous of you. <laughs> well, good night, Marshal. It's a deal, then? I'm not the least bit interested in having that mortgage paid off, Marshal Dillon. The Blake farm is worth about $2,000 now. In five years, it'll be worth three times that much. Land's going up in Ford County. So I don't want the money, I want the farm. And when it's put up for sale, I'll get it at my own price. That foreclosure still goes. I see. Oh, good night, gentlemen. Well, I guess that's that. I don't know why I ever thought he'd take the money. The Blakes won't get a cent out of the sale. He'll scare everybody off and bid it in a few dollars over the amount of the mortgage and nobody in town will even try to... But in town, we even try to... It, it, try to what, Mr. Dillon? Chester, I'm going over and wake up Mr. Buck, and I got an idea. And if it works, we'll hold that sale at noon tomorrow. Well, that's pretty short notice to find an auctioneer. I don't need an auctioneer, Chester. This one I'm going to run myself. <laughs> you know what we're here for. This is a foreclosure sale of the property and the household effects of Edward and Martha Blake, ordered by the court at the request of that fine-spirited, good-hearted public benefactor, Caleb Andrews. All right, all right. Get on with it. Get on with the sale. All right. Now, the first item I'm offering is a breadboard. Marshal Dillon... May I suggest you lump the household effects together and offer them as one bulk item? I'm sorry, Caleb. I'd rather offer them one at a time. 
Unless, of course, you'd care to waive all claim to the household effects and withdraw them from the order of foreclosure. I waive the claim. The household goods are withdrawn. Now, get on to the house and land. So ordered. Now, the item offered is 160 acres of tillable land, a four-room house, and a barn. Now, I won't read through this description. You all know the property. It's a good farm. The amount of the mortgage is $420, held by Caleb Andrews. All right, the bidding's open. What am I offered? $450. I have $450 from Caleb Andrews. Do I hear another bid? Now, the farm's worth $2,000. Are you going to let him have it for $450? How about another bidder? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Dillon? Yes, what is it, Chester? I have been thinking some lately of getting me a little place like this and settling down. I'll bid $1,000. I have $1,000 from Chester Proudfoot. Do I hear another bid? Why, it's a trick. He doesn't want this place. $1,000 going $1,200. Caleb Andrews bids $1,200. What do you say, Chester? Well, uh, I think I kindly like this farm. $1,500. The bid is $1,500. Going once, going twice. $1,600. $1,600 from Mr. Andrews. Mr. Proudfoot? Uh... $8,420. Eight thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, he never had that much money in his whole life. Do I hear another bid? What do you say, Caleb? Do you think I'm a fool? Going once, going twice, sold to Chester Proudfoot for eight thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. The buyer will come forward and complete the sale. Well, now, don't you worry, then, Mister Andrews. I got, I got it right here. Now, let's see, this eight thousand in. Uh, uh, $500 bills, and, and, and here's the 420 Where did you ever get that much in cash? Well, I saved my pay, Mr. Andrews. And then, of course, I, I only drink mostly beer, and it adds up after a while. Well, Caleb, I guess $420 of this is yours. That takes care of the mortgage. Well, Ed, looks like you made a pretty fair profit on the place. A whole lot better than I expected, Matt. But I... I'd still rather have the farm than the money. Uh, well, uh, Ed, I have been sort of thinking it over. Uh, maybe I kind of lost my head. When you come right down to it, I don't know what I would do with a farm, so <laughs> if you'd like to buy it, I'll take a $420 loss and sell it back to you for 8000 cash. That's done, and, and here's the money. It's unheard of. They can't do it, Marshal. Well, as far as I know, there's no law against a man selling his own property. And now the way I see it, Mr. Andrews, is right this minute, you're a trespasser on my property. What? So... Come on now, let's go. You care about this, believe you me. And stop pushing me. Chester, here. you better get that $8,000 back to the bank. Mr. Botkin's probably worrying himself into a breakdown for fear somebody will find out he let us have it. Yeah. All right, Mr. Dillon. I'll, uh, I'll see you in town later. All right. Matt. Matt, I don't know how we can ever thank you for what you've done. Uh, not me, Martha. Thank the bunch that work at the Long Branch. <laughs> Now, they're bums and drifters, most of them, but when Kitty told them the story, they really came through. We'll pay it back, Matt, every cent of it. And that girl, Kitty, I, I guess I've said some hard things about her in the past, but, Matt, will you ask her to come out to dinner some afternoon? I'd like to thank her myself. Sure, I'll ask her, Martha. I think she'll appreciate that even more than you know. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Joseph Kearns, Dick Beale, Jack Moyles, Lawrence Dobkin, and James Musser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. 
This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story of the Western Frontier. When Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke.